telling me it's a professional operation here. Somebody should have turned that light on. Somebody didn't. Somebody or some buddies were too busy eating steak sandwiches that I just made <laughs> yeah, in we were. four minutes. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know, Lynn didn't get anything. What you know. sandwiches? I know, I know. The two of them were in here crying about not having any food. Max, give him a bite. Mm. No, I don't want. Mm. I don't want that. I don't want pity food. That's crazy mm. talk. With we right, all but, of but, sweet but, but, balsamic. I know, I know. How good is that? That oh, was yeah. crazy. Okay, I have to do this. Uh, it's chicken night. I want to marinate this chicken because I don't have a whole lot of time before I have to <laughs> cook it. So it's three ingredient marinade plus the chicken makes four little green onion at the end. Five things. That's it. So watch what it is. It's soy sauce, and I'm gonna use, uh, the recipe for about half this is, is like a cup. I'm gonna use about two cups. I have to make sure that this thing is, is covered well. And it's brown sugar. Mm. So well, I'm gonna add brown sugar. You can go to, this is called Five Spice Chicken. It's on the website. It's, it's really good. It's a lot of soy. It's on uh, your It's a lot of soy. Website. Yeah, but don't forget. It's just, it's because you have to have coverage. Mm -hmm. Everything's got to be covered. So I want about two cups of soy, which is coming right up to about this middle mark here. And stop. Hey, welcome <laughs> to the same live cast, by the way. Sorry, welcome. Hey, you know what? If that light was on, <laughs> whoever needs to be blamed for that, uh, we would have started normal. Mm. Welcome to the Sam live cast. I'm Sam. We cook live here uh, every show. The point is, is that if I can make this live while hosting a show, in a short period of time, you can certainly do it at home. Does that make sense? That makes perfect it does. sense. Lynn Thank just you. turned down a bite of the steak sandwich. I don't Lynn, know. Lynn, don't, don't. Lynn, put your pride aside, dude. And I just know. Eat it. Nope. I know, man. Okay, this is Not five good. spice. And forget the jar that it comes in. I just have, I, it's an OCD thing. I like jars all looking the same. <laughs> and though the bottom shelf starts to stray a little bit, up here, everything are on these, in these one particular, I buy this spice once, and then I buy bulk after that, but they're nice jars. So this is Chinese five spice. That's, there's, there's anise, and there's, I don't know, there's like a little cinnamon. cinnamon. I don't know, there's all kinds of stuff in this. Nutmeg. Uh, it's great, and I'm gonna use about two big tablespoons of this, one and two. Again, follow the recipes on the site. Don't, I'm making a larger quantity here, so, Ignore what I'm doing and ignore Steve laughing like a child I behind the camera. Than... I know, it's I know. His fun. measurements always seem so off. Everything's approximate. Everything. I don't need to add uh, salt to this, of course, because the soy's in here. If you want to use a low sodium soy, be my guest. I don't, because I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little bit weaker in flavor. Hey, so um, did I tell you the story about this recipe? About how my no. friend uh, made it for his now wife, but that was the first thing that he cooked for her. And? And they just got married, like. You, they, I think they have this recipe nice. to thank for. Yeah. So look, a little bit down first. And then all the chicken, onion. I'm using um, boneless, uh, no I'm not. I'm using bone in thighs, skin on. I like thighs a lot. You like the bone in, you think I like the bone in, no. I don't think, I know. There's more flavor from the bone. Mm. It's better, and. Um, and I like the skin. It's a little trickier to cook because you have to keep it from burning, right? Mm -hmm. But it's all good. There we go. And there's our chicken. Nice. Okay. Nice. And you're just gonna let that sit there. I'm just gonna let it sit there, uh, out of the fridge, because it's still a little bit uh, cold from being in the fridge, and it's gonna be fine. And then we can sit down. So we're make. just marinating. All we're doing is marinating, and I'll set the timer and I'll turn it. Over in about 10 minutes, we're gonna be okay. The other thing that I could do, I might do, I don't normally, is I could take the marinade and boil it once the chicken came out of it. Yeah. And make it kind of saucy. You have to boil it because you don't want to get sick from the chicken. But if you boil it and let it reduce and thicken, it'd be really good. So maybe we'll do that. All right, let's go sit down. I'll take my drink. Once again, we have lots to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy for that. There are times when I sit down at this chair and I don't have anything to, <laughs> to talk about. And I think it shows. It hasn't happened for a while, but. Hey, I just want to remind everybody oh, that oh. they can go to the Sam Live, or sorry, the Sam the Cooking Guy Facebook page and join in on the conversation with everybody. Yeah, look at that picture right up top. Mm -hmm. Carne sauce fries from the other night. Mm -hmm. Monday night, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. And then if you can't find it, facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking mm-hmm. Guy. It's easy. All right. Steve's got a story to start the night with. Oh, I do? Steve is leading off. Steve, had a, you said you were... Wow. You, it, we were here before the show. We talk about what's going on. Steve goes, oh, I got a story for you guys. It's not that great of a story. Well, but I said, do you want to save it for the show? And you said, yeah, okay, I'll save it for the show. I don't know if it's a lead, but it's pretty funny. Lead? A, a lead, lead story? story? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, everything can be a lead story, Steve. Yeah. It doesn't have to come out punching. Well, my dad was in town. Yeah. This is totally not relevant to the story, but uh, <laughs> we were, I uh, took him to Whole Foods to pick up some stuff. Right. Um, and he mentions to me, and I just noticed at the same time, there's this guy grazing on the, you know, the, the where the, you can. Samples? The sa- no, the, you know, where you can, your favorite thing. like Oh, the, the, op- the, uh, the bins. The bins. The Shut bins. up. Oh. And he's sitting there. Shut up. Putting things in his pocket. He's no, no, no. It, he is pocket, not. And then he's eating and putting his other hand in another oh, one. Oh, man. He's not even like looking around to see if anyone's looking. He doesn't he's give a shit. He, I think he's, he was young. He didn't look homeless, but I think he's probably the kind of guy, he's just living out of his car, oh. trying to figure things out. I mean, look, I he feel. He was grazing. I feel <laughs> bad for that situation. But come on. If I, yeah. I Kelly likes Kelly likes the 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 um, uh, the Honestly, the almonds that come from yeah. those bins, and now I'm gonna want to go I'll put the little spoon in and go. Oh, now there's been some like creepy, dirty guy's hands in here. It's always I feel like I'm always the guy that sees these things, and other people don't. I I remember experiencing at a at a supermarket where an old lady. Literally took a bite out of a salad. It was a salad mm-hmm. bar at Vons. Mm-hmm. Oh, I won't say the name. Mm-hmm. It was a Vons mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. store. Mm-hmm. And took a bite of something, half of it, and put it back into the oh, thing. No. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Just wait for one second. Number one, <laughs> yeah, you said Vons. We all heard Vons. I could have been number Ralph, two, honestly. Number two, Ralph. it doesn't <laughs> reflect badly on the store. It no. reflects badly on the woman. At, oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I told my story. And, and on anything community public that's i mean you know that look when you go to uh uh uh, uh, soup plantation Mm -hmm. yeah that glass that glass that's there yeah is called a sneeze guard yes Ooh, give me ooh. yeah that they have to call it that yeah and it's less about sneezing you don't see people sneeze very often most people when they sneeze are pretty good at least turning right that's about this uh do you want to get some of that Radishes. Oh. That's what people do. Right. That fucking grosses me out so but bad. You know a sneeze shoots. Oh you know no, 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 no. Yeah. No. Come on, you see it, no. it launches like you fifteen guys, feet or something. Lynn, somebody can These somebody the Google kind of that. that yeah. you, um, why do we have to even know this? Hypochondria. That's why. I knew that um, like the it And you wonder why Howie Mandel won't fucking touch anybody. I'm mm. headed towards his <laughs> We were at the views. fair. Uh, Tuesday night. Yeah. We had been in there about three minutes, and 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 people came up and wanted to say, "Hey, love the show. Want to shake and shake hands." So I shook hands. I'm fine. Then we go over to Chicken Charlie's, and uh, he comes out. I go. There's a bathroom in the building beside it, and I wash my hands. I come out. My hands are all clean. Now I'm ready to eat because it's. The fair is food that you're eating with your hands a lot yeah. of it. You're not oh, yeah. forking it, right? So now I'm standing about to eat this food, and another guy comes up, and the hand goes right out. Uh-huh. Hey, Sam, the good guy. And I shake his hands, and I say to Kelly, I'm like, yeah, I got the answer now. My left hand is now my eating hand tonight. Uh. Oh. Until two minutes later, I find myself feeding my face with my right hand. I'm like, oh. Because you know what else I've seen? Ugh. Guys, walk out of stalls. And no. walk right past sinks and walk. Right I know. Oh no, we see so that disgusting. all the time. I hate that. In Remember that Seinfeld? Yeah, it was yeah. Just, uh, I love that. Classic bring that Seinfeld. Up. Poppy. Yeah, Poppy. There's Poppy. I'm going to make something very special for you tonight, Jerry. <laughs> and out he goes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hand sanitizer. So there's no That's the anyway. hand sanitizer. What? Hand no sanitizer. mouth sanitizer. But then you're one of those people mouth who's sanitizer? walking Don't around. Anything from the stupid bins. Yeah. Uh. I will say this, as Barry Toyonaga that I used to work for at Ontogen Corporation, the biotech company, would tell me, 
Mm -hmm. Your mouth is well protected from germs and viruses. It's your nose and your eyes that's not. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I fly on a plane, I keep hand sanitizer. I, if I fly from here to San Francisco, what is it? An hour and a half? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will use the hand sanitizer on my hands maybe four or five times. And people think I'm an idiot, but I've been told when you sit and you grab the seat in front of you or the armrest or the little pull down, that's where the germs are. And it's not that I'm going to put my fingers in my mouth. It's that I might rub my eye. Yeah. And that's where you introduce bacteria and germs into your body. Or God forbid you put your fingers in your nose. And I'm not going to do that. I literally Gross. take wet wipes and wipe the whole yeah. area down. See, I, have, I haven't gotten to that point, but I'm telling you, there's people that I see that I want to be in a complete plastic bag Ignorance <laughs> is bliss. to deal with. <laughs> right. Um, just let me hit these Today Show rumors. Uh, the what rumor is Ann Curry is on her way out. Ooh. And I'm only bringing this up. It has nothing to do with food, which obviously we don't always cover food. But I'm a huge Today Show fan. Mm -hmm. Huge. And they say Ann Curry is on her way out, and apparently Matt Lauer can't stand her. Really? really? Yeah. I don't know if that's true, but those are the rumors. And they're fairly high-placed rumors that I read on, She's online. She's pretty damn cute. Hmm. She's beautiful. And we In know person, how you feel about Asian women. She's half. Oh. And those are the best. Well, oh, by the way, geez. we have our own mixed race uh, in the house, Steve's <laughs> mother is Ethiopian. Steve's father is uh, American, uh, Caucasian American. Mm -hmm. And show the blue steel picture that we have of him. Oh, that is. <laughs> Tell that's, me that that's, that picture every time we show that. People are like, mm -mm, that is mm. not, yeah, that how do we get some gone, of that? It is? Yeah. Well, it hasn't been busted out in a very long time. So. Well, then just show him. Maybe we'll try and recover it. Lynn show him. He's right there. Oh, somewhere cute. in here. We so. were talking about your books. Right. Show him. <laughs> Plug something. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, it's Steve's headphones, probably. Okay, hold on. Watch this. Sorry for getting out of the shot. It's okay. We were talking about yearbooks earlier. This is Zachy's yearbook from Tory Pines that he just got. Ready? Mm -hmm. Steve, I'm gonna just do this with it. I'm gonna drop it. Tory Pines. Tell me, Pines has tell me when you're when you have that shot. Yeah. I can tell. You, I can see now. Ready? Listen. Jeez. You know what this is? This is. This is four, five hundred pages, five hundred pages of a yearbook. When I went to in Canada, we called it an annual, and my family makes fun of me for that. Uh, Zach won't use this. Nobody signs it. Apparently, it's not cool anymore. Did There's not a mark in this. He'll barely look at it. But the point is, we were talking about this before the live cast, and Steve said, "Yeah, when when I went, you know, people signed them." And what, what was that, Steve? Girls used to what? <laughs> they would write in their, your book and put their phone number and say, call me over the summer. Mm -hmm. God. <laughs> anyway, Ann Curry may be uh, not long for the Today Show. Steve, did you have a little fro when you were a teenager as well? Oh, please, could we get that picture? I know you mm -hmm. did. Please, oh, yeah. please, you totally please, had please. that hair just a little bit more. I had a fro throughout. Elementary. Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get that. it? I know. Hey, we're giving away two things tonight. Oh. We're giving away the Shark Attack Margarita. Anybody want one? Um, I'll have one. Thank I you think I'm good right now. I already had one. Good. <laughs> You're an Otter Pop. I love, I love Otter Pops. Oh, yeah. I was eating them last night. Now we have nine. So we're giving away these. The most amazing Shark Attack Margarita Pops. We're also giving away um, the Pity Potter, which is, you've seen my garden outside, mm -hmm. the vertical earth garden that I have. Oh. The guys that make those make a small version now. Uh, we'll get a shot of it when we go out there maybe, because I have a little one over there. It's an individual one. It takes four separate plants. It works, it either plugs in, or if you don't have a plug in the area that you want to put it, you can get the little solar version. Oh. What's it called? That's right. uh, pitter, pitter Potter. Pitter Potter. Is that right? I got yeah. it. We've By got websites that when we get there. I got Infinite corners, Fields, is this it? There you go. Uh-huh. There you go. They used to be called Vertical Earth Gardens, Pretty and now cool. they've like changed their stuff. That's their new site. That's why oh, so they're so not few called. People. They're not called uh, VEG anymore, Vertical I don't, Earth Garden? I don't, I don't know. Is what that the done. new company name, Infinite Fields? I guess so, but that picture mm. right there is of one of them. Uh-huh. Uh, you can see the little kind of 
cool looking pot. There's four different plants that holds in each of those. Mm -hmm. We're giving away two of those and a bunch of the a bunch of these. So with this, you're gonna get you're gonna grab a t-shirt, Steve. Mm -hmm. Um the uh shark attack margarita pop guys are gonna give you a certificate for two of these. And they're like, I don't know, two fifty each. Hey, and people were asking, uh, where do you get them? You can get them at Bevmo, right? Uh huh. There you go. Well, I think not everywhere yet. He's working on it. Yeah. He'll send you one of these. Yeah. It says get shark faced. <laughs> that I didn't realize was a playoff of get shit faced. No. How stupid was I? You are not very good with the puns, no. are you? No. And what the hell does we all have mean? But wait, oh my God. I, I don't think, uh, yeah, I didn't get that either. No, I don't think that's as obvious. And this, and I forgot this. And you'll get uh, a couple koozies. Yeah, the koozies are sweet. The koozies sweet, right? Let me put Look it. at that. You, that's quite a conversation starter. Yeah. Hello, would you like a shark attack? All right. I might have to get one of those soon. That looks um, really good. I know. What time is it? 6.19. We have to talk to Greg Rempe in a second. I got to turn my chicken in a minute. Can we just, can we talk about Sandra Lee first? Sure. Yes. And before we start talking about Sandra Lee, mm -hmm. does anybody have a gun? Because I don't want to fucking shoot myself at the end of this. Oh. Mm. I can't stand her. I'm sorry. And it's not petty. It's not petty. I'm not jealous of Sandra Lee because she's successful and on the Food Network and is dating the, gov was it the Governor General of New York? Is that what it is? You've done your research, apparently. The, uh, I don't Governor know. General. Who's she dating? Just Google that. I think she's dating the, is it the Governor. Andrew Cuomo? Andrew Cuomo, He's yes. He's the Governor. The Governor of New York. I'm sorry. She's dating Andrew Cuomo, really? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Can I just say I have no idea who she is? Sandra Lee, we have her picture. She's from the she's from the Food Network. She has a show called Semi Homemade, and she's just a blockhead to me. Yeah, she, I can't stand it. But what makes me even sicker is that she has two new shows coming out this summer. One of them is called Restaurant Remakes. Mm. She goes into a famous restaurant where they make a famous dish, and then she shows you how to make it herself. And then so, and then something called Cocktail Club, where she does the same thing but with booze. Jeez. I just can't. I just. Uh, so she needs two separate <laughs> shows. I don't know concept. what she needs, what, what she has, no. what she's doing. It's just insanity. It's like they're just taking the same people and That's what they throwing do. the kitchen sink like again and again and again. It's like as much, if we just continue to shove these people down in America's throats. I can't then deal eventually with it. I can't deal with it. Accept them. I can't deal with it. I have a question for everybody here. Yeah. What is a flight caster? I have no idea. Flight Someone caster. who flight casts. Flight caster. You ever heard of the term flight caster? No. Well, a broadcaster is. No. <laughs> it's a thing that predicts <laughs> yeah. flight delays six hours before airline alerts. That's what I Googled. Pete Hatton sent us an email. Oh, wait. Uh. No. If I had, <laughs> no. what? You got nothing? Good try. No, I thought I had something. That's a good try. Pete, Pete Hatton sends an email and he goes, I'm a flight caster. Oh, someone who watches the live Download cast. from iTunes and watch on American Airlines flights across yeah. the country. Nice. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's cool. It's a good term. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. And then he went on to talk about what martinis he likes and he loves the show. He just said a lot, of, a bunch of, lot of, a lot of nice stuff about it. Anyway. I just thought that term, and he's in Double Hope, Texas. I love hearing city names I've never heard of before. Say it again, Double Hope? Double Oak. Double Oak, Texas. Double Oak. Wow. Can, we, can we just do another one of those shout outs? Like, like can yeah. We, yeah. the Facebook oh, yeah. people name Where are you from? Cities? Oh yeah, let's throw out your cities, everybody. Should you just do, should you do a, uh, the, the question? Yeah, just where are you from? No, you're gonna put that right. Where are you from? So they all go well the same because spot. then if we if we put that question out there, then we'll have people answering that might not be watching the show. If we're just saying oh. it on the show, then only the people that are watching are then gonna know to go to That's Facebook true, yeah. and do that. I, I, I don't I don't okay, actually don't. mind. Okay, I'm cool. Okay, I mean because we we always get I mean so if you're joining us for the first time, I, I'm seeing that we get some few a few people from Ustream.tv. Yeah, and they just kind of stumble upon us. They're like, "What the hell is this?" And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you stick around. Mm -hmm. So. Go to Facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy. What if they're not pleasantly surprised? <laughs> then they still Dude, come on. Have a little faith in yourself. Come on. Yeah. Can we talk about your self-worth issues? We're pretty cool, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Listen yes, to hello, this guy. I'm, hello, I'm Sam the Cooking Guy, and I have self-worth issues. And you're already deflecting new viewers. 
Uh, which I didn't think was self-esteem issues. Honestly. <laughs> Look at I you, thought man. they were two completely unrelated things. I like myself. I just don't think I'm worth very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so stupid. I didn't know. Can I also recommend to the audience, I think this show's a hundred times better after about two cocktails. So <laughs> keep that in mind. So I've just had one right here. By the way, the <laughs> Margarita um, Shark Attack Pops have 6.7% um, Reposado tequila in them. They're not just margarita flavored. There's actual alcohol in these. But in this hand is something that is called, hold on. You're double fisted. I didn't really mean to do this. It's something that's called a... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Inse where's the sneeze guard? <coughs> <laughs> Instead of a Cuba Libre, it's a Cuba Pintada, which means stained Cuba. It's um, a white rum, soda, and just a little bit of Coke, just enough to stain it, to give it that light color. Mm. Very nice. As opposed to a Cuba Libre, which is just Coke and uh, white rum. Cuba. Cuba Libre. As opposed to, wait. A Cuban Missile Crisis, which is a Cuba Libre, but with a um, higher proof rum like Bacardi 151. <laughs> really? That's, that's, that's funny. That's what they call it? That's, yeah, yeah. Pretty, that's, that's right. pretty cool, actually. Right. Like Do you know when they sell that, uh, that higher proof rum is like 80 proof? 80 pr 40? I didn't 40 know proof, there was different proof. No, no, no. 40% alcohol is 80 proof. Mm -hmm. They sell one that's, I think, 50% alcohol. It's 100 proof. Jeez. The bottle comes with a little stainless steel spark arrestor on the top. So if it's near a flame, yeah. it won't go into the bottle and turn into a Molotov, Molotov cocktail right there in your counter. Or a Cuban Missile Crisis <laughs> in your counter. Right, or Cuban hey, you want to hear kind of a funny... We're talking about funny city names, right? <coughs> Have you heard of Zealand before? Zealand? Yeah. Where's Zealand, Michigan. As opposed to New Zealand? No, just yeah. Zealand, Michigan. Zealand. Oh, no. Z -E -E. That's real? Yeah. Schenectady. Schenectady. Wait. Schenect... Where is that? Sch Man that's where Nanette's from. Schenectady. 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 Wait, and then below it is Manhattan, Kansas. The yeah. Little House. The Little, the little house. house. I like that. <laughs> wow. Hold on. I'm just going to turn this uh, chicken. and it, Just for a minute. And then i got to put it on in about uh, and we 10 minutes. All I right? still got Greg on the line. You want to talk to Greg? Yeah, yeah, let's start talking to Greg. All right. Oh, Sam. Remind me, I have some pictures to show you from our friend Pata, who's down in Argentina. Oh! He's got killer pictures of barbecue. So oh, let's, let's make sure we do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, here's Greg. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, Greg Rempe from the uh, Barbecue Central radio show has now become a frequent guest. I guess this makes you a second-time guest, right? Second time in. There you go, brother. How you doing, man? Uh, well, I'm doing great, except for the fact that I have to pick a bone with Steve. Oh. Uh -oh. I thought we had come to a gentleman's agreement that he wouldn't let the cat out of the bag that I was eating out of the bulk bin over at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Guess that not. was you. <laughs> it was you. I knew I recognized oh. you. He's from oh. Kansas, though. He can't help himself. <laughs> oh, I'm from Cleveland. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Cleveland. Wow. Sorry, it was another. Course, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was another. It was another conversation I was having today with somebody. It was Brad, the shark pop guy, that's from Kansas, and I emailed him this morning, and he didn't write back. And I had to call him and say, "Hey, tell us what we're giving away." And he finally uh, got back to me, and I go, "Don't, don't make me uh, generalize about people from Kansas." Sorry, you're from Cleveland. Cleveland. All yeah. right, we got that right. It's a very. It's a very tense time here in Cleveland because LeBron James is on the precipice of winning his first oh, championship. Right. Affectionately, we refer to that as our championship. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you all right. Never get over that. Enough of that. Oh, never. We're talking about all things barbecue and with a specific lean towards chicken this evening. So here's what I like about, well, you know, I didn't used to like chicken a lot, and then I've kind of I've come to grow to love it a little bit more and more. And I agree with you when you were making the marinade when I was watching, you were using chicken thighs. Yes. And I, I never ate chicken thighs when I was a kid. Well, because my mom and my dad just, like, never made them. They were breast people. Yeah. I'm a breast guy myself, of course. Wow. However, um, after I got into barbecue, when you're in the barbecue culture, thighs are like white on rice everybody uses thighs 
especially in competition because they're you know uniform. You can trim them down. Uh, you were a judge at a KCBS event, so when I you was. were judging chicken, you probably saw 98% chicken thighs in those turning boxes. Right, but it's also, I think, the uniformity is one thing. I mean, definitely they're, you know, they're more like the same size this way, which is very mm -hmm. important in cooking it. But there's just more moisture in a thigh. Correct. I never, because I hardly ever cook a chicken breast. The moisture comes from the fact that you have that skin and underneath the skin, typically like, so if you were to take a paring knife and kind of take that skin off yeah. and kind of examine it underneath it, there's a pretty good layer of fat underneath it. So while it's cooking, the fat is kind of basing the meat underneath there, and it's dark meat on top of that, so you know there's going to be flavor, there's going to be it. moisture in there I see. inherently. Right. So that skin, which I love to eat, yes, ugh, and I'll have a heart attack next week for no, doing that. No, I, 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 look, you know what? I'm doing I'm doing chicken thighs tonight, and I purposely bought them with the skin on because I I, I, I like it. I think it's it gets a little bit crispy. It adds flavor. It's a con. It's a it's a. Uh, uh, Contrast? No, it's a, what's it's a, it, what's it's a, a layer of protection. Contextu a textural thing, I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Uh, it's good. It's all of that. And if you are novice at the grill, it does add a layer of protection, especially if you don't like the skin. If it burns, you just rip it mm. right off, and the meat underneath it is perfect. No, that's true. But if you burn up the skin and you pull it off, the chicken underneath is still fine, but it doesn't look fine. It doesn't look very good because it hasn't been exposed to the grill marks. Anyway. Correct. Anyway. Now, other things that I like about chicken. Once I got into barbecue and grilling, I realized that there were different ways that you can approach cooking chicken yes. because, you know, all chicken is not created to be cooked the same. Breasts need a whole different method of cooking to ensure that the meat is going to be juicy and flavorful. Right. But... You can use, like, I never used to cook whole birds before, and now that's, like, one of my favorite things to do. And I'm not a huge fan of ass can chicken. However, <laughs> I'm a huge fan, and this is a term I don't know if all of you know or not, and it's going to sound like I'm just throwing it out there and making it up. Uh, I'm a huge fan of spatchcocking chicken. You know what? I just watched Martha Stewart spatchcock a chicken on the Today Show yesterday, what? which is the same thing as... Uh, what's the term they use? A, a brick, a chicken cooked under a brick. Yeah, well, you know, you take, you so take, well, you take the backbone. Well, the ch the brick chicken is you take the backbone out, so the yep. whole thing flattens, and then you yes. put it under a brick. Spatchcocking is taking that backbone out, flattening it right. out, and just cooking it that way, and then flipping it over. So no brick. So but am I right? If you have if you have like, well, the term spatchcocking specifically is referring to removing the backbone. It's just. I don't know why they call it that. Oh, I see. So you take the backbone out. Uh, if you have a hefty pair of kitchen shears, it'll just cut right through the backbone, no problem. Obviously, you want to make sure you have, you know, the, the right side of the chicken up before you start doing that. Or if you have, you know, a huge boning chef knife or something like that, you can usually cut it out. But it allows you to splay the chicken out. It'll cook in half the time. It's a great presentation. And from there, you can butcher down super easy. You can go half chickens immediately. Right. Uh, you can also go quarter chickens because you'll have breast and then you'll have leg and thigh. So on a number of different fronts, spatchcock and chicken is a crowd pleaser. From you, you know what? We're going to do that one night. But let me ask you this question. How long does it take? Is it a longer process? Like prepping the spatchcock? No, no. Oh, cooking. Cooking. No, you're looking at, uh, you know, I usually do three to four pounds like whole roasters. Half and, hour? You know, yeah, half hour. Uh, okay. And I'll do those on indirect. Yeah, heats. you will. Okay. You know, high high on left and right, depending on how your burners run, and yeah, then yeah, chicken yeah. in the middle. Throw them in the middle. Yeah, and then I'll turn it over halfway. I like it. I like the idea. Thing. No, I, I mean, when I saw her do it, I thought, you know what, I've meant to do that. And then they did the brick thing, and I don't know what the brick part does. I've, have you ever bricked the chicken? Yeah, so the brick thing is going to do two things. It's going to, A, add weight, so it's going to cook faster. Yes. Um, but a lot of people believe that it's also crisping the skin up a bit more than you would normally so did, did i hear lynn answer yes to that wait what oh uh, i thought i heard somebody say yes they've they've done the brick mm, chicken no, thing he out. wasn't talking to me okay sorry yeah so it's going to give you a quicker cook time because you just have that weight like so in uh, steak restaurants uh the hack places will use weights to get that steak done right quicker. so you're getting that benefit and then uh, a crispier skin
But gotcha. you got to make sure that you're using like a fire brick uh, so it doesn't explode on you halfway through the cook and that you have it wrapped in foil to keep, you know, contaminants away from it, all that stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Quick steps. It's a great, again, if you're cooking for a crowd, it's great to bring people out to the grill, show them what you're doing. They're going to think you're like a master. But in, in reality, it's pretty simple stuff. I'm just going to get up and go to my grill and then I'm going to slowly get my chicken. Just let me say this, though, that chicken to me done anywhere inside is okay. Chicken done outside is really good. I've never ordered chicken in a rest. I mean, I've ordered chicken in a restaurant once. A friend of all of ours at the show, a guy named Matt Gordon, has a couple restaurants here in San Diego, Urban Solace and Solace and Moonlight Lounge. He does a chicken that blows me away. But I've never ordered chicken out. And like a baked chicken or a roasted or a whatever chicken, they're nice. But I don't think they're anywhere near chicken that you can get when you do it on a grill or a, a green egg or a smoked or whatever. I, I, think you have, I think you have a bunch of different components either working against or working for you. So when you're, it's inside and it's an oven, like you said, it, as good as it's going to get for me, it's okay. Right. Because there aren't a lot of other flavor profiles that are happening when you're using a grill or when you're using... So if you're using a smoker, you're probably going to be going at a lower temperature. But you're going to be adding uh, smoke flavor, so that's going to give you another flavor profile that you're not going to get in the oven because you don't want to smoke your house out. You're also going to be using probably different uh, barbecue rubs or grilling rubs that you probably wouldn't normally use in the oven again. So there's a different flavor profile. And then if you're grilling, you have the inherent fat that's in those chicken breasts or the whole chickens, whatever you're cooking, dripping down into your heat source. And that's burning and evaporating back up smoke back into the meat again. So there's all of these different flavor profiles that you're going to get when you're doing it outside. Plus, I mean, dude, it is summertime. Uh, where I am, it's we have to take advantage of the warm weather while we have it for three weeks before the winter comes for 10 months. <laughs> Wait, are you not getting that heat like everybody else is back there? Oh, yeah, totally. So it's like 95 degrees and 100% humidity for the last two days. Oh, wow. Geez. Give me that all day long. I would rather have that than when it's 10 below here and we have five feet of snow. Jeez. Oh, uh, I can't say oh. that I would necessarily agree with that. I'm not a huge, I'm just not a huge heat fan. Humidity, that's If great. I had to choose between 85 and 65 <laughs> all day, I would choose 65 in a heartbeat. Really? Now, if yeah, you choose absolutely. between 85 and and 10 or zero, what would you choose? Because <laughs> that's, well, all right. you know, that's my uh, gauge there. You know, it's going to be really hot for a little while. Then it's going to be really cold for even longer. So. Okay, let me ask you a question. I'm about to do something that I think you probably don't do. How do you feel about uh, uh, like s grilling sprays before you put food down on the grill? Yeah, I think for certain items, it's absolutely a necessity because something is just going to stick to the heat right when right when it goes down so you right. want to maintain the integrity of the food that you're going to be doing there are some items out there it's a weird product called it's called a frog mat <laughs> and, and i think initially it was conceptualized for fish because that can be kind of a delicate thing to grill say that wait say what it is again a frog mat yeah a frog mat yeah. And basically what it is is like spun fiberglass and as long as it's not in super direct heat Yes. It's this little mat that goes right over your grill grate, and then you can put fish or whatever delicate food you're worried about breaking up. It will not stick to it. It cooks fabulously. It doesn't add any, you know, odor or anything. You can just reuse it over and over again. They're really inexpensive. Wait, are you and saying it goes on top of your grill? Yeah, it goes right on top of the grill grate. Right on the grates? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I it's don't a know great product. I mean, it doesn't have a billion uses because it can't take ultra high heat. But if you're going to be doing, you know, chicken thighs or fish, I use it when I'm uh, grilling bacon on the grill outside. You grill um, bacon? Yeah, of course. Because of course. You know what I like Wait, is. Wait, who's who's grilled bacon here? Of us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> None of us. I never have, but now I want to. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's like the the bacon starts to render out. The bacon fat goes down into the fire, and you're getting smoke. It's almost like you're re-smoking the bacon to a certain degree. You're not mm. going to notice like a huge flavor profile difference unless you right. candy the bacon have you candied bacon before yeah candied bacon that's amazing yeah mm -hmm. so you're gonna put brown sugar on mm -hmm. top of the bacon then you're gonna cook it mm -hmm. uh, i've sprinkled uh uh i guess i only use white sugar on bacon then i did it in the oven mm -hmm. is that what you're suggesting no i'm suggesting brown sugar yes over uncooked bacon yes. and then 
putting in the grill or, or cooking it in the oven. That brown sugar is just going to melt down into that beautiful bacon pork, and it, it comes out nice Jeez. and sweet with still, you know, the integrity Shut of the bacon up. taste, but it's got that nice uh, sweetness to it that you're not going to get otherwise. I love that. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I love that. That's a good tip. Yep. All right. What else? You, any other last minute things you want to cover about chicken and, and some advice? I mean, look at we. What, okay. You had a recipe you wanted to share. Yeah. So it's very easy. And for me, because I wasn't like an expert when I started, I wanted stuff that kind of made things a little bit more foolproof or, or foolproof and gave me an extra window of air so I could blow that out a little bit. Right. And my biggest misses on the grill were always chicken breast so i started to get the chicken breast right. and i was brining it for about an hour or two prior right uh, just a standard salt water brine right. and then you take that out you rinse it off and then i would get like a couple pounds of bacon as you can tell i'm a big bacon guy right 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 so you take the uncooked bacon and you wrap it around each individual chicken breast so it's completely covered then you take whatever your favorite barbecue rub is, give it a sprinkle on all sides. Yes. You put it on the grill, indirect heat, and basically what you're doing is you're cooking it until the bacon is cooked on the outside. Now, it's not going to be super crispy, but you are going to be able to get a knife through it and you know just cut slices right off, and now you have bacon wrapped around. But are, are you saying by the when you get to the point where the bacon is cooked on the outside, the chicken's cooked on the inside? Yeah, so that's how it's pretty much come out for me. Now, of course, you're always going to want to use a thermometer, which is like a key component in any cook's or grill's arsenal. Okay, wait, do you really use a thermometer for your chicken? Oh, hell yes. And where do you take it to? Uh, breast meat goes to 163 degrees because there's going to be oh, carryover God. cooking, especially when you have Look it wrapped. Look at you. Egg. God, you really know your shit. Yeah, well, uh, there were changes in poultry. It used to be like 180 degrees no matter what. Right. Uh, and then it dropped to 165 degrees for breast, but then it was still 180 for legs and thighs. Now it's a universal. And pork just came down 145 degrees. Yeah. So The government, the government actually one. lowered the number on pork. Yeah, so now you don't because have to. people were like, ruining it. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I yeah. mean, people were cooking it to 180 because they thought trigonosis was still around. I mean, it's oh not 1940. God. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and, and it's if you don't overcook the chicken breast, you take it to like 162, you allow for a little carryover. When you cut in, the juices just run out of it, and the bacon is good. You mm. got the crust like really there. Good. I and love the so idea. Do you, look, do you have to like take little toothpicks and put them in? No. To hold no, it? It just yeah. No, you just wrap it around so the bacon ends underneath, and then in the cooking process, it just kind of seals together. Okay, I'm down. I'm gonna yeah, do that. We're gonna do that. Thing. All right, let's do this. Let's see if we can figure out a recipe that I can do next time you're here. All right. I think that would be fun. We have something in advance. We'll talk about it, but I will do it, and then we can try it on the show and see how it works out. All right. You like that? Yeah, I like it. All right, you're the man. Uh, Greg Rempe, barbecuecentralradioshow.com. They can find you there? Find me there. Shows live every Tuesday from 9 to 11 Eastern. Yes. The BEQ Central Show .com. And for the fans of the Sam Livecast, because uh, I rarely get interviewed, so this is always an honor for me to be on here. Pleasure. Sam is actually turning around, and uh, I will be interviewing Sam on Tuesday. Nice. Oh. Looking yes. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. So that's going to be awesome. Okay, brother. We'll figure out what we're going to talk about, and I uh, love having you here. Thanks for being part of us. Uh, have something good to eat this weekend. Let us know. We'll chat on Tuesday. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks for that. Thanks, Greg. You bet. Take Bye, it easy. Greg. There he goes, everybody. Look at that chicken. I gotta, I gotta tend to this just a little bit mm -hmm. because. Hey, Sam. See. Watch out for that camera. Oh, I'm sorry. See, so here's a. Yeah. See, look at. Wow. You know what? I knew I was risking. I was risking danger by using um, these. The, Skin, but that's okay. See what's happening? I'm losing all the skin. Yeah, Fuck I don't it. know if you know, but heat changes things. Oh God, thank you, Matt. <laughs> hey, do you want to see those pictures that uh, pot this in this? Yeah, hold on one sec. I'm gonna come in in one second. Yeah. Just let me flip all this. Whoa, look at those. So, just a little backstory: we get viewers from pretty much all around the world now. Everywhere. And uh, Pato's, uh 
a dear friend of ours that watches from Argentina. Yeah, they get the same the Cooking Guy TV show down in South America. So they used we, to, no, they no, they would go, they got Discovery Health. Sorry, they yeah. got the Discovery Health series mm-hmm. down there. Ah, oh, mother effort. That looks hot, dude. Shit, and I'm using one fucking tongue. Dude, God. <laughs> All right. Yeah, look it. It smells this, amazing already. This grill is as literally as low as it'll go without me turning it off. I might be able to go. Did we have this problem last time with your grill? Or it was just super hot. The grill it is, is just—it's just, it's just like too hot. hot. Grill. All right. Oh, and you need to, because that's the, a cool grill. It doesn't use a straight flame. No, it's called a cross ray. Th- that one came from barbecues galore. And what's interesting, instead of the f- the heat being below and the food up here. Mm-hmm. The heat source is on the sides, like this, long ways, mm-hmm. but they're tilted just slightly like that, right? So the heat from these sources come and meet like that, right in the center of it. And you can see, Steve, if you show, do you see the glowing red down on that mm-hmm. side? Totally. Yep. Right? So I see it just slightly angled up. This chicken's going to be great by the time we're done. It's going to be great. I mean, I'm losing some of the skin. and. Whatever, and who cares about that? We're all on diets anyway, so. Right. No, you are not on a diet, mister. Hey, I ate a lot of fair food last week. I'd like to eat more A whole lot there. of deep fried Oreos. It's starting to get a little smoky and in here. zucchini nachos. O- honestly, Chicken Charlie zucchini nachos are kind of stupid. Steve, I think you, you can come back. Stupidly yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you look at explain the that, Dad. Oh, my God. Hold on. Do you want to... Wait. Say they're stupidly good, what not stupid. You said they're stupid. Chicken Charlie's uh, nachos? Yes. I meant stupidly good. Okay. Well, you said stupid. <laughs> I, di- I didn't mean to say stupid. All right. So let's talk about these two contests, right? Yeah. Yes. So let's go to the margarita pop. Oh, wait. No, sorry. We got to go back to Pato's pictures. Really oh, quick. Pato's pictures. Okay. Um, so he sent this to me, and he said that this is how Argentina. Oh, are. look at that! No, no wow. wait for this picture. Look how, what look that? how. What, wait, what is it? Those are ribs. He says it's Argentinian asado. He says it's the best, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust his word on that one. But you want to see this? Check that out. What? Oh, what is that? What? That's a party. That's what that is. How, wait, how are those things being? I'm gonna zoom in. Cooked. But they're just there's like little flames underneath. You see all the like the. And, and are those ribs? Whoa. Uh, no, no, they're these. With little fires underneath? That is really whole, freaking cool. Like Hold on, sorry, lambs. I'm pulling back on that picture. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that looks a little morbid right there, but that, these are whole lambs. Oh, my that is God. Intense. Where's the head? Well, uh, they probably take that off. <laughs> Wait, is that, what, is that what we were just, that first picture? Yeah, well, that, I think the one on the right is what the first picture was, but, I mean, we can ask Pata, but he was showing me this, and I was like, you're making me hungry, and it's like midnight when he's like sending me these things. So that looks pretty good. Can you imagine a vegetarian going to something like that? That I is know. unbelievable. <laughs> check out, check out. There's a but truck wait, you holding like crazy? wood right there. It's like carting it. But wood. okay, but take the, your cursor and run it down the left side of that picture. Uh-huh. Jeez. That's n- n- all. That's not wood. That's all. That meat. is wood. All yeah. That's all meat. Down here. Yeah, yeah, meat hanging on, on these above like the wood crosses. okay so you know what's really nuts meat hanging on crosses they are you know what's really yeah. nuts go back to that white shot oh the white shot yeah yeah one two three four five there's like a dozen picked people that's it yeah <laughs> and they all look like they're wearing fireman jackets and i wonder what they do with all that meat after. i'm gonna guess they're gonna eat it do they my, sell it no, my I mean, guess is it's it, they're getting ready for a festival that's what i was gonna like. say it, it's gotta like go out for yeah it's gotta like be for something it's yeah. not like they're just uh gonna have one huge meat party yeah Speaking of meat party, <laughs> there is a restaurant here that Steve turned me on to called Tofu House. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> just Stone Stone speaking party. of meat party, Steve and I. Turn me on. <laughs> they come over and they go, do you know what you'd like to order? I go, yes, we'll have each of, we'll, we'll each have the meat party. And, and it's a bowl to, of rice. You have to wink. You have to wink. It's a bowl of rice. It's one of those like clay bowls. Oh, yeah, clay bowls. It's that like, goes in like an 8,000 degree oven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they put a layer of rice in. So the bottom of the rice gets super crispy. I love that. And then they fill it up with some vegetables, some chicken, yeah. mm-hmm. some beef. Yeah. A- any other protein? No. Well, then the egg. And then, so when they fill up, there's like rice and the meat and the vegetables and the rice and the meat and the vegetables. And then on the very top is a raw egg that comes out. 
And so you mix the raw egg in this super hot beef and chicken and rice, and it just naturally sort of thickens the whole thing up. And then you add these sauces that they, oh my God, it's so, so good. good. I don't know why I'm just thinking about it right now, but I would love to get the crew to the dim sum, to Emerald uh, for dim sum and a broadcast from dim sum with the carts going around. Well, I know what we could do. We could easily do just like a rec record the dim sum there. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I think that would be But fine. it would be cool live. Well, except that Obviously, be, everything is cooler live, I mean, but it might not the, be Except the time of the day is... Yeah, that's true. Subject to that. You know, you can't do that. Uh, before we start giving away some stuff, just let me say that fixtureslivingcom and facebook.com forward slash fixtures living is the place that you want to go to to figure out what the fuck to do with your kitchen or your bathroom or your outdoor. <laughs> just let me put it like that. If you need an idea, you know how everybody's got like a smart friend? Mm -hmm. Sorry, what? I am that person. You know how everybody's got a smart friend and you go, uh, I gotta fix that pilot light in my gas <laughs> stove. I don't really know what to do. I'm gonna get Neil. Neil knows everything. That's fixtures living. They know everything, but they're not creepy salesmany douches like you run into at so many of the stores. They're the most wonderful people. The first thing that they'll say to you, literally one of the first things they'll say to you when you walk into one of their stores and their stores are beautiful, is this. Can I get you a handcrafted coffee? And I'm not talking about like they pour you a cup of shitty Joe that's been on the heat for two hours. Like at a car dealership. Like at a car dealership. They're, make, they're grinding beans. They're making espressos and lattes and pretty things right there for yep. you. And pretty things. Fixtureslivingcom Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. They got it going on. They're amazing. If you don't go there, even to cheat on your friend who thinks they know what to do in your kitchen and giving you advice, you're crazy. You got to do it. And if you're outside of California or Arizona and you can't go to a Fixtures Living, support the show. Go to their Facebook page. Like them. Say that Sam sent you and tell your friends. And lie to them and say, we've decided to move to California so we can be near you. <laughs> yep. They'd like to hear that. I'm I got to sure deal with my chicken. I can't, I can't ignore my chicken out here. No, you can't. So, about these giveaways, are we going to do them? We're going to do them right now. We're going to do both of them. And how? You never told us how we we're going to Oh, I'm going to tell you how. Okay. So, here's the deal. This is going to be confusing and cause a fight. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Did I not say that I wanted to do something with this sauce? Yeah, you were going to reduce it. Ugh. But... Why don't, you don't need to do that right now. Oh, you no, just no, said no, you no. can't now I need do that. To. Now I need to. No, God. No, I have to do Sam. this. Sam. <laughs> uh. Hey, you want to hear a pretty cool breakdown? Yes. For our viewers. So we have a bunch of people from the United States. Second in line right now is Chile. Wait, Third wait. in line is Mexico. Fourth in line is the Philippines. And that's just the stats I brought up when I was going. Argentina, there. Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Norway, Canada, really Japan, Ecuador, whoa, Puerto whoa, whoa, Rico. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Whoa, whoa, what? What number is Canada? Like way down. Way there. down, <laughs> bro. Where, wait, where am I from? Canada. Yeah, Where's my mother? There's more people in Norway than there are in Canada right now. Watching? Yeah, sorry. You got a lot of work to do there, Sam. Your family hates you. Hey, no, but that's, that's just kind of the cool thing about the internet. You know, we get on Ustream, people just stop by and they're like, hey. Like yeah, it. you streamers, like what's it. up? Right. Join us more right. often. It's good. So the chicken's looking good out here, right? It's got some good color. Oh yeah. I mean, the 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 skin effort. I probably shouldn't have done it. Watch if I just yank this off. Now let that just start getting some beautiful color oh, by itself down there. Crazy. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be fine. Yeah, I wouldn't mind you losing the skin. I'll oh, stop it. What? You weigh about 14 pounds. I don't. <laughs> not because of the of the health the health hazards just because I don't really like it. You don't like chicken skin? I, I, I don't really like that slimy skin. Yeah, I guess the have, thought wait, of skin have you, in have my you mouth ever is had, gross. Have you ever had a salmon skin roll at sushi? No. Oh, Lynn? Mm. Yeah, love I it. don't like salmon skin. So Steve? Good. How yes. good, great? So I don't like good. skin. I've always thought, why couldn't you have a chicken skin roll? Look at it. It's crispy. Do you want a little piece, Steve? Oh, I love salmon. Let's see if Steve wants a little piece. Take a piece, dude. Steve loves it when you feed him. <laughs> yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. You guys, you guys are boring, so we'll cut to the chicken. <laughs> Seriously, that inside something mm. you know, like a quesadilla. Mm-hmm. Oh, chicken skin quesadilla. Oh my god. Yes, that was really good. And the only reason I can talk about this tonight is because. My wife Kelly is not here. People have been asking. Hey, about where? Kelly. Yeah. If she heard this conversation. She's in Boulder with Zach. They're there for Zach's orientation at uh, University bastard. of Boulder. That lucky little bastard. Just, no, Max says that lucky little bastard because he wants to go back to college. I do. Because you don't like the real world. Is I that, is no, that I love the real world. I just really loved college. <laughs> I know you love college. <laughs> And Boulder is amazing. All right, who remembers what uh, Greg said the temperature of the chicken should be? 163 Fahrenheit. Oh, my God. Lynn. What? By the way, good call, Lynn. <laughs> Can I just say something? Kiss yeah, us. I, I was going to talk about my... <laughs> kiss us. I was going to talk about... Uh, wait. Oh, oh God. boy. Oh. <laughs> Did you just nail him? Wow. That was rough. No, he nailed me. I hit my head so hard on a kitchen uh, cabinet, the corner of it, it like nailed me in the top and I have a... Uh, and now you are the way you okay, are. Okay, so here's an instant read thermometer. This is not the old school kind that you put in, the dial that takes a long time to go up. It goes up fairly quickly. So here's a piece of chicken, and we'll put it in. And you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to hit bone. Yeah. Bone will reflect a much higher temperature. So we're 132, 135. I see so we're it looks like it's going to be around 150 something by the time it's done. We're pretty close. I'm going to guess 158. No, it's that is a cool thermometer. It's good. So if he's saying 163, we're pretty darn close yeah, on this yeah, stuff. We've only got a couple more minutes left, right? I think we're doing I think we're doing well. The color looks great. The color looks amazing, doesn't it? Dude, let's give away some stuff. All right. I'm so here. here's what we're going to do. Let's go to the first one. Let's go to the uh, Shark Attack uh, Facebook page. Yes. Bring that up, boys. Mm-hmm. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get... You're going to get a coupon for five bucks towards two of these, which is basically five bucks. You're going to get a couple of these. The koozies. You're gonna get an opener, like a letter opener, which is a bizarre thing for them to make. Yeah, really what? Know. Is it for the just opening do? the cocktail? Let right me there. get it. Hold on. Oh, jeez. So uh, while you're getting that, this is you want them to post on their Facebook page? No, no, just or, wait, no? just wait. They have to do something in uh, something special. Should I tell them what their Facebook page is? Yes, you can tell them. Facebook.com/slash/sharkattackcocktails. Mm-hmm. And you can show it. So this, this, this. What? You know this. The letter. So go there. Huh. Go there. Like it. And this uh-huh. shirt, right? Go there. Like it. And then post on there where the best place for you to have a shark attack would be. It's that simple. Where do you want to have a shark attack? And they will choose. I think they're giving away 15 of these. 15 packs of this right here. It's like 20 bucks. Lynn would like a shark attack in his bathtub. <laughs> Done. If that's where you would like to have a shark attack, mm-hmm. put them there. They'll choose. They'll give away 15 of them. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. I'm not eligible, just to let you guys know. <laughs> you probably are, but you can have the stuff because it's already here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number two, Steve. Let's try and show the pitter-potter outside. How far out can you go with your uh, camera? Let me wrangle you for a second. We'll go to their Facebook site. Yep. This is facebook.com slash infinite fields. And there it is, right? Oh, God. Not good. Not good? Okay, Not hold good. on. I'm good. You got it? Yeah. Watch this. So that's the vertical earth garden. Not the vertical earth garden this time. I know, I'm just pointing out the garden. Oh, yeah. You see that? Oh, oh wow. wow. That thing's cool. That's Solar, what it huh? is. And so look, in here are four. You can't really tip it because there's water in here. There's four. Let me see if I can bring this. That thing is so cool. Wait, I just got to ask, how much are one of those? I might just buy one. I think one. they're 85 bucks. That's really cool. It's not bad. Solar so power too? Well, there's a, an electric one. If you have like, let, let's, like let's say you've got a, sm- uh, a balcony or a small area that you can't do a big giant one of these things, mm-hmm. you can do one of these. But look, there's four separate lettuces in here. Wow. 
No, I'm really digging that. That's, How awesome is that's that? That's really cool. So now can you Lynn, get that? Lynn got the shark stuff. Do you think I can get one of those? No, 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 I actually, I want one of those instead. Wait, sure, this just is behind door number two, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you pick door Steve. number one. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> Steve, just show straight down. Yeah. Got the four different lettuces. Oh, cool. Nice. How cool is that? That's really right? cool. Hey, try and stay in range, Dad. Try oh, not okay. to go any further. I'm back. Yeah, you're on your digital leash now, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, oh, so Haley. here's the deal. Haley likes it, too. So here's the deal. Oh, you're going to go to their page. Yep. Their Facebook page, right? Mm-hmm. i got to check my sauce in here. You're going to go to their Facebook page, and you're going to say how you would use lettuces that you would grow in your own personal little pitter-potter. How you would... What would you, what would you, how would you use lettuces? What would you make? That'll make it simple. Like their page, what would you make if you had your own little pitter potter? Like a really good BLT? Yes. Ooh. Or some amazing salad mm -hmm. or some crazy herbed up uh, calamari. You probably get the most use of the out of the garden with lettuce, yes? Yes, but don't forget, I mean, with four separate compartments in that thing, I think that I would do lettuce, a couple of lettuces, and definitely an herb or two. Mm -hmm. I think would be great. Basil. You could do oh, so many things that you can do with that stuff. It's just crazy good. And we've been super happy with ours, and of course we've got lots of room, so we have the big version back there. But these are for perfect for people that might not have a ton of room. But even if you have a ton of room, you can still enter. It doesn't make any difference. They don't care. They just want you to be happy. They're great guys. They're going to give them away. And we don't care where you live. Hey, what are you doing with the green onion? The green onions are going to go on this chicken in about uh, 13 seconds. Nice. Nice. I'm going to bring them in. Hold on. You're going to see what's going to happen. What's everybody doing this weekend? Anybody have weekend plans? Hmm. Yeah. No, not a, not really. <laughs> I am going to be all booked up shooting two weddings. Oh, you are? Yeah, back to back. Oh, mm. look at you. Mm. So that'll be kind of fun. All right. It's the season, man. Can I say, you know, I've been walking. Kelly and I have been walking. Kelly's out of town. I walked by myself this morning. I did four miles by myself this morning. I had a, uh, I had an epiphany. Yes. There's a lot of people out there walking in the mornings. And I do my thing. And I'm going at a pretty good clip. It looks mm -hmm. like this. <laughs> Haley, move. Haley, move. <laughs> it's, it's, it looks like this. <laughs> I know it looks stupid, but you can't do four miles an hour if you're going slower <laughs> than that. Have you seen Olympic speed walking? <laughs> they look ridiculous. <laughs> they do. That's this. Speed walking is this. <laughs> and I'm not doing that. But here's what I came across this morning as I was doing this. You know what's happening? Uh huh. I don't want you to take this the wrong way, Lynn. Oh, gosh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I see this Careful. without being too. <laughs> Western or Caucasian people mm -hmm. give you the, when they're out there, morning, <laughs> or even just one of these. <laughs> And I know we're going to go with this. Your people? We give you the stink eye. Nothing, man. What is it? it it's, uh, and let me say, you guys live as long as you do because you understand the value of exercise. That's clear. I come across a lot of what I believe are Chinese, maybe somebody else. I don't really know. No, let I mean, me, I'm, not, I'm not stereotyping. I'm just saying, let me get this chicken off. Let me I'm just saying, this. though, that when I try and make eye contact, I get nothing. First of all, yes. I, I can't explain. I'm, I'm sorry for my people on that well, one. We're not but very why do you knew this? You knew this. No, no, no. It's, it's, still, it's, it's totally true. The other one is that a Chinese family's favorite pastime after dinner is to do what they call sambu, which basically just means walk around the block. Right. Oh. Or it doesn't mean literally walk around the block, but that's what you do. It's like taking a walk with your family, grabbing the dogs, grabbing like, you know, a nectaring or something. Just like walk around, and just enjoy the weather and things like that, you know? And from where I'm from, Bakersfield, it's actually quite nice at around 7.30 p.m. Hmm. So well, let me tell really you something cool. what you guys do, because I've now figured it out. 
So don't drop that, man. You ignore the F out of anybody walking by you. <laughs> and I know uh, what the elderly Chinese people do. They have like the sweater, the long sweater vests on, and they it, walk like this. Hey, the you hands. know, you know, in always have the hands behind the back. My, my grandma's defense <laughs> and my grandpa's defense. The reason they don't do it is because they can't really speak the language. So my grandma, mm. she'll smile at you, but she won't say anything. And so she seems like kind of like I don't want to talk to you, but just because she actually can't. <laughs> no, she, I'm not even getting a head nod, man. I'm getting nothing. Okay, well maybe people in your neighborhood are just a little bit more unfriendly. Me. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Here's a little piece of this chicken. Wow. And look how much I made, boys. Yeah. So now that I've drizzled down this sauce and oh. reduced it, we can do this with it. What? It's a lot thicker. It's a lot thicker. And now just a little bit of this. What? That's what I'm talking about. This is what this is all about. And once again, if you're new to the live cast, we made this tonight in the, in the hour. It's an hour and three minutes. But we're about to end. So just cut yourself a little piece. Oh, perfect. Good. Mm. Be fucking perfect. And you know what's going to be amazing? This is I'm going to turn this into chicken salad sandwiches tomorrow. Yeah, you are. Did you see that tuna salad sandwich I had on my Facebook today? Yes. Oh my god, it was so good with sprouts. Mm. This will be chicken salad sandwich tomorrow. But what makes you think there's going to be anything left? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, here. You got Lynn here. <laughs> Oh, so don't you do that. Me here. Watch this. Here you know, go. you can <laughs> just save this till after. That cable is You always assume after. that. You always. <laughs> there you go. I got you. Oh. You're not acting. Are you acting? Uh -oh. Don't tell me you're acting. I don't want. It. Don't fake it. <laughs> mm -mm. Never fake it. Mm. How good is that? Three ingredients and then the chicken. Brown sugar, soy sauce, five. Spice powder that you can buy from any supermarket. Sounds good. Thank you for being here. Have but a great weekend. Wait. Gr great week of shows. It was a good week of shows. Good week of shows. Great fucking week of food, man. Yes. Yeah. It was solid all week. All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks for being here. Uh, go eat something well. And don't eat anything shitty. And remember, as... Uh, what's his name? I can't even remember. Dan. Never mind. From uh, ABC News, what was it? What was his Dan name? Rather? Dan, Dan Rather. Dan Rather. Dan Rather would say, "Courage." Oh, fuck. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>